Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. If you're interested in courses or commissioning me, you can find all the contact information and links to classes in the description area below. While you're down there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. That will notify you when new videos become available. And then while you're there, that little thumbs up so I know you like what I'm into. Today I'm going to show you a technique that I call Pompeii Stucco using Fermolux Grisello Plaster. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is base coat the surface using the Micro Primer. Micro Primer is an interior, exterior, water-based product, meaning it cleans up with soap and water. Back up, it's not a water base, it's a quartz base, but it cleans up with soap and water. It's proprietary to lime-based plasters, and that's what we want to use. I'm going to work over white that's been rolled on with a low nap roller. Quite simple. Um, plastic, if you wanted to tint it, use pigment, never paint. Pa paint will break it down, and the product won't work, and the plaster will then fall off the wall. Okay, that takes us to the plaster. Grisello. This is the label right here from the guys at Fermolux. Okay, can you see that? Not very well. But anyway, it's been tinted to a Benjamin Moore color. That's what I love about it. You call Tony up on the phone and go, Tony, I need BM1076 Capliano Bridge. Sounds good. All right, tools for this. We're going to need our pavon, spatula, <laughs> trowel, and a spatula. But I can't seem to find my spatula. I had it here and I put it down. I'll find it. Okay, this is what it looks like wet. I just used this on a project. It's what's left over, so I'm going to make a sample for you. So, this is different. This is the fun stuff. Where we're going to break some rules in a good way. If you put Grisello on too thick, it's going to crack. We don't want to do that. But, for this technique, we need it to look a little interesting. So what we're going to do is put it on and cover it with long coat. We're putting this on about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Now a good friend of mine from Montpellier, France taught me this technique and he refer, it's referred to as Pompeii stucco. Uh, when they unearth Pompeii you can find this movement of plaster on various walls so it's stuck. Okay, so we're coating the surface. That's all we're doing. Give me a minute. It's gonna take a take a couple. Don't worry about making it super smooth. That's not a big deal at the moment. We want to get a good coverage, though. About again, sixteenth of an inch thick. Grisello plaster can be used interior or exterior. Tints with lime compatible pigments. Never paint. Never paint. Never paint store pigments. It will break down and destroy that color. I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's the worst color I've ever seen. This is going to dry a lot lighter. Remember, always remember that. Now we're going to take our trowel, put it flat. Look at that suction it creates. And what we're going to do is create swirls. I'm doing it left-handed, so that's not my best hand today. And just let it dance across the surface, creating those light swirling motions. But you want to create that suction, all right? Don't press it flat. If you press it, you're not going to get the interest that you're looking for or the movement that we're looking for. You get a different trowel. I think there's something on this one. Yeah, it's got a little chunk of something on it. Here we go. Clean trowel. Put it on there, start up here. So it creates a suction, and then now we're gonna let it, we're gonna pull it off the surface a little bit, and that's what's gonna give us that just enough suction to create the movement. Now what we don't want to do is create lines. See these trial lines I've got here? So let's just come over here. And I know somebody's gonna be like, how do you do this in the corner? Very carefully, take your time. 
Look, if that's a corner, small. Not necessarily small, but come in and bump it. All right? And then you're gonna come out. Okay, let's go over here and finish this off. If you put this on too thick because you want more texture, wrong product. Okay, it's gonna crack. This is one of those you need to practice, practice, practice. I don't like the swirls up here. Or circles, I should say. There we go. Let's let this dry 100%, come back, show you the next step in just a little bit. All right, we're finished. Huge difference in the color, all right? Remember that, always a massive difference. Keep your, t uh, aha. always make a dry sample. Second coat, we're gonna pull this very, very tight. Backfilling what little tiny bit of texture we have. Same color, but what I want you to really notice is Look how different that is, wet to dry. Same exact product, same color, nothing changed. Now you're gonna use some pressure. You got to muscle this a little bit. If you put it on too thick, you're gonna lose the interest that we've created. Can you kind of already start to see it happening? Maybe not. Now, if you're having a hard time getting it into this very soft texture, remember this is not a heavy texture. It looks like it. Biggest problem with all pla Venetian plaster is there's so much interest because it's so, I don't want to say transparent, or, it's not a texture. There's going to be an illusion of texture when I'm finished. This makes a lovely accent wall. We're going to do the whole room, boy. It's got to be a really sharp room. But it's a lot of movement for a big, a small room. A big room could handle it. Clean trowel, put the lid on the material, let's not let it dry out, go to waste. See it starting to dry already? Pulling it tight. Now if you're having a hard time getting it, if it's a little thick and you can't really get it in there, a little bit of water. And that'll help you get it in there. Now I'm gonna go on my blade, edge of my blade, I'm at about a 30 degree angle with a moderate pressure and I'm compressing that quickly because it's that tight so if you're not proficient yet to do a whole wall by yourself have a team member somebody help you and I just like to come at it different directions okay and what that does is make sure we're getting it from a couple different angles Ooh, I heard something. Came off the tape. That's a good thing too. You might want to actually, after in or in even in between coats of plaster, it sounds like a lot more work, change out your tape because it can get crusty over here. It won't stick to this tape, but when you hit it the wrong way on a project, it can come out and scratch your wall. So yeah, it sounds like a lot of work to retape a wall or a room but it's a lot less work than having to redo a wall because you made a boo-boo. Okay. That's it. Let me show you something. Well, that's not it. Ready? Here we go. Look at that gloss. Look at me. Look at that. 
but look at the interest that we've created. All right, we're gonna let this dry because it's hard to see a lot of that movement until it's completely dry. And then we're gonna enhance it. See in just a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take the Aztec gold wax and put it over top of this guy. So trial almost flat, lay it on. Trial comes up about 30 degrees, pull it off. And now we're gonna make that texture come, well, when you touch it, yeah, there's a slight relief to it, not much, but this is gonna make it look like there's a lot. I'm fighting that tape right there. Now it's gonna darken up and then it's gonna lighten up as this plot, as the wax dries down. It will lighten up. If you're going and you think, ah, I got a little too much down in some of that area, get yourself a clean rag. You can always come back and just kind of rub over it a little bit. Now pull some of that wax out of those low spots if you feel it's a little too much in there and then trial back over it. Now what that does is gathers up any loose material. If you pulled it from the low spots, brought it back to the top. All right, let's clean this trowel off because this is good wax. Yeah, Aztec gold. Beautiful, love it. Okay, let's set this dry. I'll be right back in a minute. Three, two, one. Okay. The wax is dried, we have a rag. You can buff it with a your car buffer if you want. Lambs will buffer at about 900 RPMs. Uh, but for a sample board, I'm just gonna use my little rag. Flat rag, because if you use the textured part of it, it will leave lines. And look, it's just a simple little buff. This wax polish is so easy. Do it the same day you put it on. Don't wait a day or two. The, the longer it gets, the harder it gets. Therefore, the harder it is to polish. If you put it on too heavy, you're gonna see it get hazy and need or milky. That means it's got moisture trapped in the surface. Let's pull our tape. It always looks better when the blue tape comes off. Get off my fingers, it's stuck. All right. Let's show you what we got. See that movement? Isn't that pretty? And look, there's the hints of the color. See my Aztec gold wax dancing in it? Look how that is. Look at that. Isn't that great? Great? Yeah, I tried to say beautiful and switch to great, but mm, mm, mm. That make a gorgeous accent wall. Okay, there you have it. Home paste stucco with Aztec wax. Possibilities are endless. You could do this in dark blue, like Blueberry Hill color from Ben Moore with pearl or silver wax. You could do this in black with copper, black plaster and copper wax. You could do it in green plaster with the gold wax. Oh, it's endless, just endless. Uh, you could do it with white and pearl wax. That would be beautiful. Ooh, white plaster with the blue wax is super sharp. It just keeps going and going and going. But there you have it, so fun finish, fun finish. And it's, it's such a pretty, pretty, pretty look. Okay, well there you have it. 
Okay. If you have any questions, you can ask down in the comments section below. I will do my best to answer those as quickly as I can. I will leave links to all the products, tools, and materials used in the description area below, as well as links to the website, because if you're interested in taking a class or hiring me for a project, you can find all that information on the website at thefoeschool.com. While you're down below there doing what you do, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. That'll let you, you will be notified when new videos come out. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up so I know that you like what I'm up to. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.